Now to a top story we're following this morning. Police here in Texas still searching for 11 year old Audrey Cunningham. It's now been five days since she was last seen in Polk County, northeast of Houston. Her parents dropped her off at a bus stop Thursday morning, but they say she never made it to school. Since then, a person of interest in her disappearance has been arrested on an unrelated charge. Polk County deputies say 42 year old Don Stephen McDougall's car may have been involved in her disappearance. Audrey's backpack was also found, found near a dam. Despite no sign of Audrey, her community isn't giving up finding her. There's always hope. That's what we pray for. The safe return of Audrey to her family. There is a $7,000 reward for information leading to finding Audrey. If you have any information that could help investigators find her, you're asked to call the Polk County Sheriff's Office, and that number is one 936 3276810 A recent 600 page Department of Justice report is outlining the failures of law enforcement on May 24, 2022 at Robb Elementary. The DOJ pointed to 10 key moments that the nearly 400 officers could have and should have stopped the killings. Our case site investigates team has poured over hours of body camera and surveillance video there to bring you those moments as they happen. Do we gotta get in there? Yeah. The DPS is in there. We gotta get in there. He just keeps shooting. We gotta get in there. And to see the full KSAT investigate story, head over to our website, KSAT.com, where there is a full breakdown with multiple angles. 504 in your morning headlines from Republican presidential rival to former President Donald Trump. Nikki Haley is criticizing him for remaining silent on the decks of Alexei Navalny, Russia's leading opposition figure. ABC's M. Wynn explains as the Biden administration points its right finger at Vladimir Putin for Navalny's death, Trump has only posted on social media comparing himself to the late anti-corruption activist. Former President Trump still staying silent on the death of Vladimir Putin's fiercest critic, Alexei Navalny. Despite making multiple appearances since Russia claimed Friday, Navalny felt unwell and collapsed in a Russian prison. I'm thrilled to be back in the American heartland. The former president has only posted on social media, comparing himself to Navalny, claiming without evidence that the U.S. justice system has been weaponized against him. Trump's remaining challenger on the Republican presidential primary, Nikki Haley, criticizing him for neglecting to directly weigh in on Navalny's death. Either he sides with Putin and thinks it's cool that, that Putin killed one of his political opponents, or he just doesn't think it's that big of a deal. This coming days after Trump also set off alarms saying he would encourage Russia to attack NATO allies who failed to meet agreed upon defense spending goals. We need to remind the American people that Vladimir Putin is not our friend. Russian prison officials claim Navalny, who is serving a 19-year jail term for offenses widely considered politically motivated, died from, quote, sudden death syndrome. But Navalny's team insists he was murdered. They say his mother was told that her son's body would not be released until investigations were complete. So right now we don't have access to the body and we don't know for sure where it is. Russian police have been cracking down, arresting hundreds of people across Russia for trying to pay their respects to Navalny. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, Navalny's death, along with the fall of a key city in eastern Ukraine this weekend, have added urgency to the debate of passing more aid for Ukraine's war against Russia. But House Republicans have insisted no more foreign aid until more border security has passed. M1, ABC News, Washington. Six people were injured and one person dead after a shooting overnight at a Waffle House in Indianapolis. Information is limited right now, but police say that officers responded to a report of a person shot early this morning. And when they arrived at the location, they found six people with gunshot wounds. One person died and the other five people were taken to the hospital. Police are still investigating. This morning, a community mourning the loss of two officers and a firefighter after a standoff in a suburb of Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Burnsville police officers and firefighter were responding to a domestic violence call over the weekend. Authorities say an armed man was barricaded inside a home with seven children, which escalated into an exchange of gunfire. The two officers, Paul Elmstrand and Matthew Ruge, along with firefighter paramedic Adam Finseth, were killed by the gunman during the response. All seven kids made it out of the home alive, but Governor Tim Walz says this tragedy won't end anytime soon. And these families are forever impacted, and we still have Minnesotans willing to take an oath, 
sign up, do the work, and know this can happen. And, and that speaks volumes about this community, speaks volumes about Minnesotans. Several other first responders were hurt and were taken to nearby hospitals and are expected to recover. Closer to home, the first Sunday service at Lakewood Mega Church in Houston was held yesterday, a week after that deadly shooting where a woman opened fire during afternoon services. The suspect is 36-year-old Janice Moreno. She was killed in the exchange of gunfire and her son was shot in the head and is listed in critical condition. The Houston Chief of Police held a press conference after the services asking for prayers for the boy who's still in the hospital. Bill Samuel, seven-year-old innocent uh, kid, Pray for him, pray for his family. You may not never know the, the uh, true motive. Police are still investigating why Moreno opened fire and why she may have targeted Lakewood Church. They say that they will be releasing body camera footage from the shooting within the next 30 days.